we're doing the sum. Okay, so you want this? You're just setting it up. Okay, n equals one to infinity. Okay, that's what I heard so far. What next? Okay, zero. Oh, I'm sorry. Zero is better. Okay, zero to infinity. Now what? Yeah, x squared. I like that. Times what? What? No one. Okay, hold on a second. Seems logical. So x to the four. What do you think it is, kids? Do I get rid of that x squared? What do you think? Kids, can, this is just, you have the formula, it's written in like nine places in your book. This is the formula for cosine, just with everything multiplied by x squared. So factor out x squared from everything, and what do you end up with? x squared times 1 minus x to the fourth over 2 factorial plus x to the what? Is it six or eight? Is this like a sex to the what power? Eight, right? Over four factorial minus x to the 12 over six factorial. Okay, great. So we factored it. It's going to keep on alternating. So we know there's going to be a negative one that's alternating sign in there, right? So let's, let's, let's figure that out. So if you want to make this the proper sign, it's going to be negative one to the what power? It's going to be to the n, right? Because the first one is positive, so it better be zero to begin with. And then we have we can do the denominator rather rather in, in rather straightforward manner. What's the denominator of this fraction going to be? It's it's zero factorial, then two factorial, then four factorial. So what is it going to be, Umi? Two n quantity, right? Factorial like that. So now we've taken care of everything except this numerator. Instead of one, what's another way we could rewrite one? Remember, we've deconstructed, we've like re, we've expanded those. What what would be the term for that if I wanted to write it in the same pattern? X to the zero over zero factorial, right? So when you plus, so what we're really interested in the power there it goes zero, four, eight, twelve. So those are all powers of what? Those are all powers of what? So not powers. I'm sorry. They're all multiples of what? I'm sorry. Four. Sorry, multiples. I meant multiples. Yeah, You're like, I don't know what that one is. That's hard. <laughs> Two, 12 is power of what? <laughs> Do we have to use logarithms? That would be terrible. Yeah, it's x to the what? 4n. Four. Four there it is. Oh, that's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. All that, can anybody tell me? You've seen this. It's the same as cosine, but now that you've seen 10.3, what did they do to build this from the cosine formula? It's not cosine x. What is it? Cosine of x. So what do you plug in for x? x squared. And then you multiply everything by. That's all that happened there. This is the formula you've seen before, except instead of instead of x, they plugged in x squared and they multiplied everything by x squared. Yep. That's what you needed to do for that one. Does that make sense, everybody? What do you think? Okay. Well, let's keep moving then. That's fine. So here are the notes for the video you watched last night. And I talked about how you needed to substitute, you could differentiate, and you could integrate. There's some cool steps. If you have two things that are equal, it's what I it's from from the beginning, what did I tell you? We're gonna take something, rearrange it into something seemingly ugly, but what can we do to that ugly thing? We can do all the things we couldn't do before on the other one. We're looking at something going, man, I have no idea what to do with this, but I can rearrange it into something that's identical in terms of function, do everything on that, and then reassemble it. So are, these would be the, the three most important ones. How many people have memorized them? Be honest right now. How many people have memorized them? Uh, have you memorized them? You must memorize them. You must memorize them. And I talked about this before, but what's the easiest one to memorize? E, it's all the terms. No, it's literally, I'm not, it's, not, it's not meant to be a pun. It, it's just a mnemonic to remember. <laughs> It's all of the terms, and then I always go up, so I think of it as cosine is next. Cosine starts with one, and it's even. Cosine is even. Look at all the numbers there. All the powers are even. All the powers are even. And then what's the what's the big structural similarity between sine and cosine? They're just offset by one. They all they're offset by one. What's the similarity? They alternate negative, positive, negative, positive, but they do it in the same. They start with positive and then go negative. They start with positive and then they go what? Negative. 
how would you go about generating the Taylor series for e to the negative x? You saw it last night. What did I do in the video? Yeah. Substitute negative x squared for something Not for something else. For what? For y. No. For right. oh, whatever you want to call it, sure. Yeah. But like in this case, yeah, whatever the expansion is. But where do we plug in negative x squared? In this case, it would be for x. Yeah, if, if I'd written the formula like that, exactly. You know, it's kind of, it seems like it's something that should be illegal because you're substituting like negative x squared for x, right? That's why I like, I think, I, did I change the variable a little bit in there? Yeah, that's one of the things I had done originally in my first run through this like years and years and years ago, and it helps because it, you're not, you're not, it's not that they're equal, it's just that you're, you're making, you're building the new set, like it's a placeholder. That x is just a placeholder. It just happens to have the same label. There is redundancy sometimes. Oh, yay, for all y, very nice. Oh, that's what we did, excellent. So then can someone remind me, how did I find the Taylor series for this thing? And why did we use this special method? If you didn't use this, quote, special method, what would happen when you tried to generate the Taylor series for this by brute force? What would happen? Why does it get nasty? Uh, because of the product rule, right? It can, well, first of all, the chain rule kicks out that 2x, and then it starts going like this. It keeps on like generating a new term every time you differentiate, right? And you get really angry at that. So instead, what did people, what did you do instead? You use like one over one plus x, and you like use the derivative. You use right? one of those as the derivative. No. no Can you like, be more specific? Bring it all together. This is one over one plus x squared is equal to d dx of what? Tan inverse, yeah, tan inverse of x. It is that, correct. So why was that helpful? You watch the video, it tells us that you're saying that we have this. Tan inverse of x is equal to the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, that's nice. Yes. You can take the Taylor series that we already know and generate both sides. The that. Taylor series of what? Um, tan. Is it inverse tan points that we have? Yes. It is. Is this, do you remember this from the video last night, everybody? So what did we're almost there, but I want you to finish this. As a class, theoretically, if ten of you view one thing, you might remember as a group where to go next. I want some help. I'm not going to lead you through this. We need the Taylor series. What we just wrote was true, but we actually don't have the Taylor series for, for tan inverse unless you looked it up on a table. What does this kind of look like, Lena? What does it kind of look like? Exactly what? It's like 1 over like 1 plus y, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good, you remember it. Nice. And then what method did we have up here? Oh, if we, oh, we could substitute. Oh, so if we have the Taylor expansion for this, what do we need to just plug in? That's it, exactly, right. And what kind of thing is this? This is 1 plus y to the negative 1. So do we have a method of expanding something that looks like that? The binomial, exactly. Good. Good job remembering. Nice. What we wrote before, was what we wrote before correct math? Sure. But did it get us anywhere helpful? Not really. I mean, it led us to a place like if we had known the Taylor series for tan inverse, we could have gone somewhere. But finding the Taylor series for tan inverse is just as challenging as what we had before, if not worse. So do you remember how to get that Taylor series for this? Do you remember? Anybody remember that? We talked about it briefly at the end of the class. So using the binomial is a little challenging. Yep. We can super quick just get the first few graphics. We could. We can. We can. Do you remember this, though? This is what I wanted. I picked, put it at the top here. There's the expansion right there. There's the expansion. You have 1 plus x to the p. It's 1 plus px plus p times p minus 1 over 2. p times p minus 1 times p minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed. And you keep on going until they zero out. Remember that yet? yesterday? How it gets to a point where they all go away. And this is super helpful. So in this case, what does p equal in this case? It does equal negative 1 in this case. P equals negative 1. So if we're going to expand this, 1 plus y to the negative 1. What's the first term? It's always going to be what? We, yeah, we have 1, right? And then what's the next term going to be? Let's look at that formula again. It's right up here. px. So what are we going to do? Minus what? Y. Exa well, minus y, exactly. So plus, I can just turn it into minus already. Minus y 
and then what? Plus, y. plus yeah, so I should just paste it down here so it doesn't take all this. It might seem like it's hard to remember this, but how many terms are being multiplied above 2 factorial? How many terms are being multiplied above 2 factorial? Two. two of them. How many terms are being multiplied above 3 factorial? Three of them, right? And then they always start with p. They always start with p, and then how do you get the next term? You always just subtract 1. So in this case, the next term, it's kind of fun going through this. It's like what they put in the background when people are thinking about mathematics. Just like stuff scrolling by that looks like this, numbers floating in space, right? You know what I'm talking about. So it's, yeah, p times p minus 1 over 2 factorial, in this case, y squared. That's the term we're looking for. So in this case, it's negative 1 times <coughs> negative 2 over 2 factorial y squared. So what's the next one going to be? Plus negative 1 times negative 2 times over times cubed. So you know that this thing, is this everything ever going to end for us? No. So what happens to this? You'll notice, though, you all notice, does it simplify kind of nicely? Yeah, negative 2 times 1, that's 2 factorial. And then you have negative 3 times negative 2, that's negative 3 factorial. So you get minus plus what? Minus y cubed plus, oh, look, that's kind of cool. Now, what can we plug in for y? Uh, exactly. Now we can just take x squared. So we can build really cool Taylor polynomials. You will definitely spend time on the AP test building Taylor polynomials. And it's similar to what we did before with our absolute values in the ratio test. You kind of get to stare at it until, like, the sailboat materializes. And I'll give you a gold star if anybody knows what I'm referencing right now. No? It's okay. It's an older movie. You ever seen those dot pictures that you look at and then you can't see anything and all of a sudden you see, like, the person inside the dots? It's the same thing over here. You stare at this and you're like, oh, man, the red herring is, is tangent because you think, man, I see 1 over 1 plus x squared. I think tan inverse, right? But in this case, in this case, it looks like something that we can actually work with. So don't, I guess the moral of the story here is don't, don't forget the binomial expansion. Okay, wow. what about this one? Do we have to do anything crazy to figure out the Taylor expansion for this one? Do you think it's super crazy? Do we have to do anything other than a substitution? Or that looks very similar to that. We know e to the y, right? Do we know what e to the y is? We know what that equals. What's the only difference between this and this? Well, okay, sorry, you have to speak so humans can. This, the straightforward substitution, what do we know e to the y is? Who can rattle it off for me? Uh, Kate, what is e to the y? Just look up, what is it? Yes? Over 2 factorial plus what? Well, it keeps going, right? Over what? 4 factorial, all right. So if we wanted to do this substitution, what could we plug in for y? Change it from x's, from y's to x's. Theta minus what? Yep. 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 And it, I'm, I'm doing a terrible job of writing this out, sorry. Plus, plus theta to the fifth over 5 factorial minus theta to the seventh over 7 factorial, exactly. So if we let this equal x right there, if we let that equal x, the first level is really nice and straightforward. Hey, we can substitute that in, right? It's just a direct substitution. But if, I, if we wanted to get rid of the sign, we have to do what Lena just remembered, which is we have to take this and actually start working with it, which is kind of a pain in the butt, it seems like. But if we keep track of the terms and how they collect together, the pattern resolves itself relatively straightforward. So for example, this whole thing right here, not for example, this whole thing right here is going to go there, it's going to go there, it's going to go there, and it's going to go there. Now am I ever going to have you multiply out something that's that big and square it, for example, the whole thing, like for more than just a couple terms? No. I'm definitely not going to make you do that. What happens as you start, I mean, how many terms is this? How many terms? All of them, All of them right? So if you were to square it, you could arbitrarily keep going for as long as you want, right? That sounds fun. The thing is, do the powers of theta get really big really quick? 
They do. They do. So I think I zoomed in and out a lot when I'm that's this section of the video because it just keeps on getting really big. So if you were to plug this in once, you end up with e to the sine theta is equal to 1 plus this thing, right? I'll just write out three of them. And then what's next? And it keeps going. Sorry, I'll do dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. And then what's next? Plus that thing what? Squared. So this is where you get all cranky-like, and you're like, Mr. Seaman, that's unfair. I don't like this. Theta 5 over 5 factorial dot, dot, dot. squared over what? 2 factorial. Let's just ruminate on this. So that's going to be sine theta squared over what? 2 factorial. But what are we saying sine theta is? Theta. What are we saying sine squared is? Theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial, right? Plus what? Fifth over what? And that thing keeps going squared all over 2 factorial. So that's what we have right here. That's what we have. Right, that's literally the same thing right there. Right. Go, but I'm sorry. Down one. But yeah, down one? Just theta squared over 2 factorial. Because, because when you do this out, you get this wicked big mass of variables, correct? Yes. I'm only interested in right now, right now, just what is the what is the coefficient of theta squared? Because I want to list them out power by power. So is there a ton more to this? Okay. Absolutely. But I was just saying we're collecting first we have the constant one. Right. Then we have theta, and then we're like, where are all of the theta squared? It exactly. Okay. Instead of like expanding it out and then counting, mm -hmm. I'm just counting. I'm looking at it going, oh, there's only a theta squared right here. That's the okay. only place it's going to happen. It gets a little bit more complicated with the cube because we have a cube here, right. right? And we have this cube here, but what happens when you square it? It, go, it turns into 6. So these turn into square, 6, 10, right? So we have to go to the next one, right? That's going to lead off with a theta cube. What's the denominator there going to be? 3 factorial. You have to be careful that maybe one other one isn't being developed somewhere else. So you have this one here, and you have the one over here. And then you have to, it's theta cubed over 3 factorial, and then you're going to have theta cubed. You have to be really careful when you do it out. But you can start collecting them. So instead of doing it all out and piece of pulling them together, just do it, look for what you want in order. That's all I'm saying in this example. That's it. Um, so there's another relationship. The derivative of what? Yeah, 1 minus x squared. That's the derivative, I just like writing it out like this, of 1 minus x to the what? Do we, oh, we want to, not this one, not this one. Yeah, 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 1 minus x, sorry, 1 minus x. So when you do this out, what do you end up with? Yeah, you end up with 1 over 1 minus x what? Squared. Is there something else there too? There's a negative on top, right? Oh, so there's Wait, another. You're absolutely right. It's even better. Look at that. So do we have another relationship between these two things? It's squareable, but it's also differentiable, right? It's, there's a different. You're like, I'm searching for it, but it's 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 Saturday morning, and I'm not allowed to say things like that. Right, <laughs> exactly. I know. So, what do we do? It, we, what do we do now that we rec recognize this relationship between the two things? What do we do? Ah, so what's this one right here? We know this one. One over one minus x actually has a really cool expansion. It's as straightforward. It's even better than e to the x, right? What is it? Plus, plus x. What? Keeps going, right? Yay, that's very nice. So we now know if we wanted to if we know that the derivative of this is equal to what we want, what do we have to do? Take the derivative of the series and the Ah nice. So if we actually differentiate this whole thing, we know that this turns into what we want, right? And this turns into one plus two x plus Oh, look at that. Is that cool or what? Is that kind of neat?
I think that's a cool one. That's a pretty neat one. Here's what I'd like you to do, everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you're gonna help me with something. Um, I would like you to hold on. This is what I'd like you to do. Write me e to the x nicely on the board right now. Write it out for me. What does it equal? One. And then what does i cubed equal to? Negative i. And then what does i to the fourth equal? One. So let's look 